Could you just tell us a little bit about your background and, and, and how you became interested in rockets? Um, I've always been been an engineer, so right from you know, very early age, and grew up in an engineering environment with the rest of my family. So engineering was always it was just part of the Bex. So um, so that's I guess that's where it, where it all started. And then um, yeah, I, I started off life as a as a tool and die maker, um, and and on the practical side of things, and then moved up um, through into design and then analysis, and then ultimately ended up at a, a government research lab. And, uh, and so, although I don't have university degree, um, sort of done it through industry rather than through, through academia. So that's, that's sort of how I started. And, and rockets has always have always been, you know, something that's that's really interested in me. Interested. Well, I mean that's incredible. You don't have you haven't studied science at university and uh, before in, in any no. way. No, no. I mean, there's two ways of two two ways of doing engineering, isn't there? I mean, you can go to university and learn about it in the classroom. For example, you can learn about when a shaft will break under load, or you can go into, in, into industry and actually make that shaft, put it in a machine and have it break and go, ah, oh, okay. So you've learned the same thing, but just in a different way. Mm. Do you think that that approach has contributed to your success commercially in, in, in your ventures? Um, I don't think it has affected it either way. What, what is your motivation in that case to, uh, to, to building a, a commercially viable company? Well, I guess I mean you want to build a, a business, and, and you know you want to create something. So uh, I think if you're if you're in business and you're not motivated, then you shouldn't be in business. You know, if you're not motivated to be in business, then you won't be in business. So. And what, what in your opinion, what are the uh, what would be one of the most single, most important factors to um, to achieving success in, in any field of industry that you're really passionate about? Hard work and motivation. Everything else will follow after that. Yep. And do you know when you uh, when when did your interest in rockets actually uh, uh, begin? Um, I don't remember. Very very early age. I always you know always enjoyed the engineering challenge. I guess the, the engineering challenge really uh, gravitated me towards towards rockets, and also the fact that you can just fit a bucket load of energy in a small space. Right, and in New Zealand, I mean, you were saying that uh, we don't have a rocket industry, and that most people, when you when you say that you're going to be building rockets, look at you as if you're a little bit mad. Yep. So, uh, what sort of hurdles and challenges has that brought to you for, for someone who's actually trying to make a business out of manufacturing rockets here in New Zealand? Um, it, it's it's brought, brought hurdles in the fact when you're looking for certain in the early days that is uh, looking for certain support from various organisations. Uh, if you're looking for funding, for example, you know, impossible in New Zealand. Um, so, you know, I have to say, really, not really any major hurdles. Um, so, where did you uh, first then get your, your your funding from in the initial stages when you? Sure. So, um, it's a bit of a funny story. Was well, yeah, it's a funny story. So, um, I started Rocket Lab and uh, with the vision of, of what I wanted to do and uh, put together a business case and business plan and all the rest of it. And then there was a guy on the radio by the name of Mark Rocket, and he had bought a ticket on Virgin Galactic's um, space tourist venture vehicle. And uh, he'd renamed himself Rocket. So I thought, well, here's a guy who's clearly passionate about rockets. So I contacted Mark and shared the vision, and I was just extremely lucky that, that uh, he shared the vision as well. And uh, he was prepared to put his money where his mouth is as, a, as an angel investor, and that's, that's what got us going. Fantastic, yeah, and you couldn't ask for a better name for an angel investor to give you the money for exactly. the project as well. Exactly. So um, you, you were talking about earlier about how, how how much hard work is involved in trying to in building a successful business. Um, where do you find the energy to to, to keep driven? Um, it's not something you find; it's something you've got or you haven't. In my my, I guess in my experience, I mean, you're either motivated and or you're not. So it's really the passion for the subject which keeps you motivated. I guess so. I mean, it's it is it's it's challenging and there's ups and downs, but at the end of the day, it's it, I'm doing what I want to do. So it's not hard to find the passion or the motivation to do that. Mm. Fantastic. And now you're working with uh, large organisation uh, organisations in the states, mm -hmm. people that have been building rockets for many decades. Yep. Uh, what sort of recognition do you think New Zealand is now getting from these from these organisations? You would be surprised. You really would. I mean, initially, it's uh, oh, I didn't realise anything's going on down in New Zealand. Um, but the good thing about this industry is it's all about the technology. And if you've got a technology that's superior, people will listen. So, well, it's often joked actually. Whenever I go to some of these these organisations, 
is we're, we're defined um, within the United States as the New Zealand space industry. This is Rocket Lab, the New Zealand space industry. Everyone thinks it's a bit of a joke. But. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing that we, uh, I mean, I find it hard to believe myself, but um, what do you think is the future for, uh, for rocket science, um, both in New Zealand and, and globally? Well, I mean, fundamentally, um, you know, if you, if you look at, you know, where technology is going, it's more and more reliant on um, extraterrestrial communications and, and infrastructure. So there's absolutely no argument that the space industry is growing and it continues to grow. Even in the depressions, it you know it continues to grow. So, I mean, there's a huge, huge industry, you know, there and, and growing. So, it's all up. Is there limited uh, space in space, or is it going to fill mm -hmm. up eventually? Uh, is there a problem with debris and, and yep. rubbish? And absolutely, there's a problem with, with orbital debris right now. So, how do you stop your your satellites or your rockets? Um, uh, I know you, you're not yet into the. Um, getting something in orbit, yep. but how do people prevent this, uh, their orbiting satellites from crashing? Well, there's not a lot you can do. I mean, you've got a certain propellant reserves on board, and there's often, um, you know, avoidance manoeuvres are, are done, and things go wrong too. So, yeah, it's going to become a much bigger problem in the years to come. So, with such a limited industry here in New Zealand, how did you go about building a team of people and inspiring a team of people to work with you? Funnily enough, we don't usually have much difficulty in employing people at Rocket Lab. I mean, it's 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 you know we're, we're doing different stuff, and the advantage of that is we can employ the very best people. And, and and you know, I like to think, and I'm pretty confident, we've got some of the best engineers, if not the best engineers, in, in the country working for us. So, um, you know, it, it's it's a challenge getting people with experience, but um, you know, in my experience, if you've got people with motivation who are really really clever. All you need. And a lot of your uh, client base is uh, military, uh, US oh, military. Some of it, not a lot of it. But some of it is. Yep. Yeah. What, what are the military organisations and governments like to negotiate with? Uh, good. Yeah. I mean, no. No problems there. <laughs> they pay their bills. Right. <laughs> and what would be one of the, the, the best pieces of advice that you could give to uh, other entrepreneurs or business people or scientists that really want to push their idea out? And, uh, and they think they've got a really good idea and they really want to push it out. Don't talk about it, just do it. Just get off your ass and do it. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, Peter, thank you very much for your time and we'll sure wish you all the best with your uh, endeavours in the future. Thanks very much.